Lori, thank you so much for coming to be a part of the Awesome Rage podcast today. I welcome you and uh, just thank you for giving us this time. So let's start out. You had not one, but you had two awesome marriages. Let's start out with your life with Clyde. <laughs> oh, well, I guess we were about 12 years old when we first saw each other. <clears throat> and he said, he told his best friend, we, we met at church, um, <laughs> and he told his best friend, someday I'm going to marry that girl. Well, <laughs> at 12 years old. Uh. At 12 years old. And I heard about, well, we wound up going to high school together. <clears throat> and he, he, um, we had our first date when we were just before we turned 16. Mm -hmm. And he, um, I knew that he, that marriage was on his mind. But anyway, I had determined, I had determined from the time I was a little girl, I felt the Lord wanted me to be a pastor's wife. My, my dad was a pastor. Yeah. So I, I just said, Lord, you're going to have to help me um, and let me know. I was asked by a couple of other nice guys for dates and I, they were not going to be pastors and preachers. And I thanked them. And so Clyde Parker was the only guy I dated until, until um, I was graduating from high school, but he had determined to rush through school so he could start pastoring. And at 18, he already had two years of college. Oh my gosh. I was graduating from high school. He was graduating from college. <laughs> I mean, junior college, yeah. junior college. And we got married. Wow. And went to Indiana, uh, at Indiana Wesleyan University. At that time, it was just called Marion College in, mm -hmm. in Marion, Indiana. So that's where we were. That's where we went at 18. <laughs> wow. Married very young. Yes. So, so he was continuing to do, was he still doing schoolwork when you moved to Marion? Or oh my was, goodness. Yes. Yeah. That See, was, he had, he had gone, his parents had not even finished high school. They worked at Cannon Mills in Kannapolis. They were, they were hard laborers and he was six, he was six, let's say he was 15 during the war, during the world war uh, two. So many of the young men had gone to war. So at that point in time, North Carolina lowered the, they could get their driver's license at 15. Wow. And if Clyde needed the car, I mean, different churches were asking him to come and speak for their young people and, and teenagers. And he would, his parents would just let him take the car at 15. <laughs> wow. Can you believe that? <laughs> a lot but of trust was, there. <laughs> but he was also going to Catawba College while he was still in high school. So that's the reason by the time he was, I was graduating from high school. He was graduating from junior, from junior college. college. Wow. Wow. So um, what kind of preacher was he? How would you describe him as a, as a pastor? <laughs> Fiery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he was. A loving, loving pastor, which, uh, I, you know, there are many um, reasons I can say that. Yeah. He was, he, the Lord really did gift him with pastoring. Oh, that's, that's amazing. So what, uh, you, since you always wanted to be a pastor's wife, what was it like being a first, a pastor's wife, especially like in your first church or two? Well, he graduated from college. <laughs> When we were 20, I had our first child while we were in Marion, Indiana. Uh -huh. He graduated and we were called to pastor a country church outside of Moxville. Actually, <laughs> it did not have running water. Oh, my gosh. It did have electricity, but we had no indoor indoor toilet. We um, <laughs> it, it was a it was a it was a. Primitive church. Yeah, it sounds like it, especially on, what we'd see sitting, today. Yeah. The church was actually sitting on rocks for the foundation. Oh wow. <laughs> so what were your first thoughts when you when you saw that? 
like, oh my gosh. <laughs> no, we were thrilled. We were thrilled. thrilled. We moved, we moved into that parsonage. It was a seven room house uh -huh. um, with no running water. And um, he immediately um, started talking to the members about building a new church. And actually the two years we were there, they had the farmers donated lumber, uh, a sawmill moved in on the church property. They, they began taking logs that people in the neighborhood had given. And they, they said, well, we're going to, we're going to see what kind of a worker this redheaded preacher. He, he was, he had red hair uh -huh. and we're going to see, and they made him the off bearer, which meant that as soon as the, the lumber came off of the, off of the little mill, uh, he had to carry it away <laughs> and they worked hard and fast. Yeah. And after he was just, he looked like he was about to faint. <laughs> he <just laughs> <up> with <him. laughs> They said, we've got a, we've got a hard working pastor. Yeah. That was kind of, that kind of baptized him in their own way. Didn't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's great. Uh, so you guys were married for how many years? We, we were married for, let's see. 50, I was five months older than he. We were 53 when he went to heaven from the plane crash. Uh, so tell us, can we talk about that? What happened with Clyde and then, and how did you get through that? Well, we had, uh, I need to back up just a little bit. Sure. We, sure. we were at the little country church for two years and then we moved to Elkin, North Carolina um, they also needed an, a new church. <laughs> and so he, while he was also, I don't know, this, this is what's unbelievable. We went to Elkin and he, by that time, he had his teacher's requirements. Um, he had already gotten a master's degree or was getting a master's degree in education from the University of North Carolina, Greensboro. So he taught school while we were at Elkin. Um, and the church built a new church and he, he just kept, he just kept busy, busy, busy. Yeah. <clears throat> and, the, and our, that's where uh, four, the other three children were born too. Um, so by the time he had built such a reputation for, <clears throat> to be such a hard worker that the church, the large church in High Point, North Carolina decided they wanted him to be their pastor and he there was a lot of they had just built a new church and the associate the, the senior pastor knew him and just told him he said whatever you see that needs to be done so on one side of the church there were it was acreage and they built a nursing home and a retirement home oh my God. and on the other side of the church there was lots of acreage and they built a school which is now one of the largest Christian schools in North Carolina. <laughs> wow. Wow. What a story. Yeah, oh, wow. is right. And that is so amazing. because he had that kind of reputation, there were several ministries that wanted him to join, to be on their board of directors. Or, <laughs> oh, mercy. So he said, Ernie, I've got to learn to fly um, so I can move a little faster. <laughs> and so he did. He learned to fly. And I just said, honey, I, I just can't fly with you. I'm, I'm, a, I'm afraid to fly. I'm afraid yeah. to fly. And but <clears throat> he learned to fly and he was actually on one of his flights and he was coming home and the airplane. It was a it was a oh, I can't. It was a it was a single engine, but and it developed engine trouble as he was coming into the airport. Oh, wow. And there were two other people with him. Our oldest son was with him and another man. <clears throat> and they crashed on Cone and Lawndale Boulevard in Greensboro, not far from the airport. Mm. And he went to heaven. Was he the only one that passed away in that crash? Well, our son was able to get our son was was a very slender man. Um, the other passenger was a professional man and he had, oh, oh, oh there was a, a, another young man in, and he was able to get out through the, 
through a broken window of my son. Oh my goodness, my son was able to kick it out and he got out the and one wow. passenger, the other the third passenger got stuck at his hips. Mm. And he went to burn and Raleigh, but he he, is, uh, he went to heaven mm. Also, mm. about two weeks later. So that was a shock. Well, yes, my, my husband Clyde had put his body over this man's back his hips i guess he was you know trying to save his you know from being burnt badly wow. but, you know in in his death he was trying to save somebody he was a hero yeah, yeah. he was a hero. Yeah. so what went on with you after that how did you get through well, <laughs> i was at that point i memorizing scripture and i had i was um <laughs> I was a librarian at a public school, in an elementary public school, and I couldn't, when at that point in time, we had the uh, card catalogs, and I could not throw, when I was discarding books, I would just keep the, I would just keep the little things to write, to write notes on. So I was memorizing Philippians 4, 4 through 8, and um, so I, we had, Clyde and I had gone somewhere and I had left my little card in the car, apparently, obviously. And he had put one of those little yellow stickies on it with and, and had written a note, Ernie, is this yours? <laughs> <laughs> it obviously was mine. It's mine. <laughs> but when I read that in, in he, oh, he had put it, he had taken it to the house and put it in the little box. Um, of incoming mail, <clears throat> and when I picked up that little art library card and read, Ernie, is this yours? Oh my goodness! Rejoice in the Lord always. Mm -hmm. Rejoice in the Lord, not in circumstances, not my death. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God hmm. that passes all understanding will be yours. <laughs> oh my goodness and keep your hearts and mind through Jesus Christ. I've kept that in a Bible. I bet. Wow. Because that was his message to me. Ernie, is this yours? That is, that's so powerful. And just how God know. uses something like that and how it pops up at the right time. Wow. At the, it, 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 I, I like to say God orchestrates. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. And I think that's just another sign that he does and how he always shows his love in so many different ways. And in the midst of probably the hardest thing you ever went through, maybe yeah. other losing your child uh, or both, but, but yeah. there was a, there was an answer right there for you. That is so cool. Exactly right. So that um, you became a widow, then you decided to be a missionary. And no, I okay. absolutely did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I never wanted to be a missionary. Um, I, I, what is so amazing? <clears throat> I like to be a person. I like to have someone tell me what to do, and mm -hmm. that you know, Clyde, Clyde was that kind of person. Sure. Um, he he kept me. You know, I would never have gotten a college degree. Mm -hmm if he had not just been pushing me. <laughs> so when, oh mercy, oh, I, I went ahead and he pushed me through master's degree in library science. And oh, wow. it was because of him that I was, I had something to do. So <clears throat> when he was gone, it was as if it was as clear as crystal of uh, less than a year, just months maybe after he was gone. I don't really, really recall. It's been 37 years. Anyway, I, he, the Lord nudged me and said, Ernie, I want you to remain single. What? <laughs> oh, please, Lord, don't, don't put that on me. <clears throat> so 
so my parents were in their mid to late 80s and i said to them um can i come and live with you <laughs> And I did. I moved in with my parents oh my because gosh. I felt like they would be, if I had to be single, I needed to be busy with family. So I was, I told the Lord I would remain single and I lived with my parents for nine, for nine years. Wow. That's, <laughs> so what did you do during that time? Well, <laughs> that's interesting. My daughter, Phyllis Webb, uh, she and her family are family singers. Um, she had pushed me because she had been involved with Christian women's clubs. And she had said, Mother, you have a story. You have got to tell your story to women. Mm -hmm. And so she got me involved with her finger in my back. And I went to a tea. I said, Honey, I don't want to. But, Mother, you've got to. That's the way my children have have helped me. <laughs> Sounds like they picked up where Ernie left or where your husband left off. That's right. So, yeah. so what I did, what I did, I learned to, I, I wrote a speech, wrote a talk, and I started getting invitations to speak at Christian women's clubs. And sometimes it was several a month at that time. Christian women's club was really big. Uh -huh. And I, I went out of state. I went as far as Michigan. I went as far as Florida. Um, I even at a family reunion spoke to a club in California. Wow. So all across the country, sometimes they would have, you would go somewhere and they would have two or three, you know, in a row. So sure. my mother traveled with me sometimes. <clears throat> well, you really had a, um, a ministry. Oh, yeah, it Powerful was. Powerful ministry. It was. Powerful it story. Was. So did your faith um, ever falter at all after after he died? Not, not really. I can't say that it did. As I said, my children's <clears throat> finger was in my back. Um, the year, actually, before, just before my mother went to heaven, um, my son had gotten involved with Campus Crusades mm -hmm. ministry with commission and the teacher, national teacher um, conferences. So he had said to me, Mother, you've got you've got to get involved with Campus Crusade. I said, no, 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 honey, I can. Yes, you can, Mother. Yes, you can, Mother. So he he and his wife took me to a conference in Florida and um, it was as if the Lord just said yes. And I said, but I'm, I'm living with mama. So I, and it, you know, again, the Lord with the Lord orchestrating things before I knew what was happening, mom went to heaven and my son said, mother, you've got to get involved. And I did. I started going to, uh, well, my, with them footing the bill, and <laughs> I started going to teacher conferences. The first one I went to was in Moscow. Wow. And, yep. And um, goodness gracious, it just it just exploded from there. I went to several. <clears throat> goodness gracious. Um, oh dear, how do I? How do I even explain? Um, after I had gone to probably six or eight of those teacher conferences, uh -huh. <clears throat> yeah, they said, look, we, a commission told my son and, and me, we need you in Vladimir, Russia. And before I knew what was happening, the kids had packed me up and I moved to Vladimir, Russia, and I was there for 18 months, a year and a half. <laughs> wow. God just opened all kinds of doors. Well, you know, and, and when you have a family, uh, when you have children that are walking with the Lord themselves and in ministry, uh, and they knew that I needed to be encouraged and they just yeah. encouraged me. Yeah. What a great tribute to the way that 
that you guys raised them, that they uh, to, turn out so. to be that. Yeah, yeah. But um, and, but, the, and, okay. and to encourage you in that. But everybody makes their own choices. Right. So I can't take credit for the fact that my children are in ministry or that, you know, that they follow the Lord and are obedient to, obedient to the Lord because everybody makes their own choices. That's true. That's Wonderful true. parents have children that are not following the Lord. So I can't take credit for being a good mother. Well, you obviously instill God used you in their lives in powerful ways. You and Clyde both, it sounds like. And you're right. It is. Um, we all have to make that decision ourselves. So I'm sorry. We all have to make that decision. Oh, yes, yes. That's exactly right. Before we go. I think it's so interesting, though, that they were they were willing to let you do whatever you wanted to do or whatever God called you to do. They didn't say don't go to Russia. They didn't say all that. They were they were all supportive of you. Oh, very supportive. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I describe great. it as their finger was in my back. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you said you needed somebody to kind of guide you, so I guess they took that took that out. That's right. Uh, so, did you ever think about getting married again? Did you ever? Obviously, you said that God said no, but you did get married again. So, what happened? <laughs> that is again <clears throat> another story how God orchestrated. The whole thing um, <clears throat> back at Marion College when we were 18, when we went up there, there was another couple from North Carolina that was there by the name of Margaret and Cliff Wood. Her daddy had been pastor of one of the Wesleyan churches in High Point. Um, so she and I had gotten acquainted uh, when actually when we were teenagers, mm -hmm. uh, she married Clifton Wood. Um, and they were at Marion College. I, uh, Margaret and I were the same age. Clifton was four years older, so because he had served in the in the Navy during uh -huh. World War, during World War Two. Okay, one day, and they they pastored for years, and our because we were acquainted, our paths crossed because they also pastored, and. We had known each other, but um, mm -hmm. Clyde went to heaven and Clifton drove from Charlotte uh, up to High Point and was at was at Clyde's funeral, uh, which was, uh, mercy me, the funeral director said it was the largest funeral ever in the history of, of High Point. Wow. The, church, the church was crammed full of people in the balcony and they... The school opened the library and they had um, they had people sitting in there and so on and so forth. But anyway, um, I, <laughs> Margaret and I, they, Cliff was on staff of the huge church in Charlotte, an interdenominational church, Calvary. Calvary. Okay. Uh -huh. And one day, Clyde and I were uh, not Clyde, but I had gone with a group of people from uh, from my church in High Point to a conference. And walking from the fellowship hall to the sanctuary, I had Margaret was sitting on a bench and uh, I stopped and we were talking because we had known each other. And I was telling her about all these trips I was making with Campus Crusade. And I said, I write a, a trip, what I call a trip journal to my friends because my family is financing all my trips. <laughs> oh my goodness. And Margaret said, well, put Cliff and me on your mailing list. So I did. And actually, from the time I put her on my mailing list, I had gone to, let me see, I had gone to South Africa in a 10 month period. I had gone to South Africa. I had gone to Belize, Central America. I had gone to Mongolia in wow. Asia. <laughs> I had, and, and I had gone to Guatemala. Wow. And, of course, Margaret had gone. So I had sent trip journals, but Margaret had gone to heaven that year. That was 06. Okay. And I could not send tri a Cliff a trip journal of those 10 months, Africa, Belize, Mongolia, and, uh, and Guatemala. When I got back from Guatemala, I thought, and I, I came, you know, I was addressing envelopes to send out my trip journal. And I said, 
Oh, Lord, should I send one to Cliff? Margaret's been gone almost a year. Should I send one to Cliff? And I felt okay. And I thought, you know, there's so many scores of widow women at that large church. (laughs) (laughs) He probably has already started dating. (laughs) No, he had not. When he got my letter, it was as if he said, well, he said to himself, oh, my goodness, I forgot about Ernie. At that point in time, he was 80 years old, but he was still he had gotten his doctorate in counseling. Uh huh. And he had started a ministry called Shepherd's Lifeline for pastors and their families. Oh, wow. So he was <laughs> he was counseling. And and he said, oh, my goodness, I forgot about Ernie. You know, she's still in ministry and I want to stay in ministry. So he picked up the phone, called me five months later. We got married. Oh, my gosh. That's a great love story. Well, yeah. I mean, really and truly, when I got that call from him, it was as if that um, what, what should I call it? The bubble of of singleness just collapsed. Just like this is it. It's just like that. And I knew it was going to be okay. <laughs> and it was. So you were in your 70s then and you I'm were a, I'm a a, six and you were newlywed. So what was that like? <laughs> <laughs> well, I had stayed so busy. Honestly, people didn't say I acted like I was 76 years old and Cliff was not acting like he was 80. Yeah. As a matter of fact, a week, two weeks after we got married, he turned 81. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> so you guys, so that was, uh, God bless you with an, another great marriage then. Oh, my. Are you kidding? Oh, my goodness. He, he, he was following Gary Chapman's book, I suppose. Um, of course, they were counselors at the same time. Yeah. The Seven Love Languages. Yeah. Yeah, there's a fantastic article in Christianity Today about Gary and Carolyn Chapman. I don't know. Really? How nice. Yeah, I saw them recently, actually, when my my grandson was ordained in his ministry here in High Point. <laughs> Gary and Carolyn drove over from uh, Winston-Salem and How were nice. here, were here for, for Parker Webb's ordination. How nice. That's great. Uh, so with two marriage, if you had something you could say to the people who are listening, what, what would you say is the key or the keys to a great marriage? Oh, to follow, you know, <clears throat> to follow God's plan for your life. Wow. You know, the scripture says that when we were, before we were even born, we were conceived. That's why I'm, <laughs> I'm wish there was no such thing as abortion. But anyway, when we are conceived, the Lord has a plan for our lives. And if we are walking with him, he will open doors and we will know that this is the way God wants us to go. Mm -hmm. And so following God's plan, being obedient and going through open doors is the way to be, have a successful life and to have someone that's that's doing that with you i'm sorry what you said and and that and to have a husband that's doing that with you oh oh my goodness yes oh my goodness yes yes actually he was in hospice he was in hospice for a year and yet we we would travel wow I know his daughter Beverly said, Dad, don't drive. Let Ernie drive. <laughs> <laughs> so, and of course, I always felt more comfortable with him driving, but <laughs> I drove the last uh, the last few trips we made. Oh, that's great. That's that's wonderful. So, thing I want to ask you: We have so many people and couples I work with and counsel with, and everybody has their own definition of what success is. So what do you think a successful life looks like? Walking, walking with the Lord, being obedient to him, um, 
releasing things in our lives that are not God ordained. Goodness gracious, I don't know how to, I don't know how to say what I'm, <laughs> what is in my heart. I don't know. Well, it's um, not, that makes total sense. It, it's, I mean, your life has just been uh, a, a life of listening to God and doing what He asked you to do, even things that you didn't want to do. Or... Didn't want to do. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Mercy sakes alive, a lot of things I didn't want to do. I didn't want, I remember the first, <clears throat> Clyde started taking people to the Holy Land. And he wanted me to go. And, and of course, I wanted to see the Holy Land. But I said, honey, I can't. I just I just can't. I just can't fly. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You know, and of course, he forced me to. <laughs> first, the first flight I made after he went to heaven, <clears throat> our son was graduating from Cambridge University in England. And I, I wanted to go to his graduation. Oh, mercy, I wanted to go. So I bought a ticket. And can you believe we would we were out over the Atlantic about 30 minutes and the and the pilot came on and he said, <clears throat> well, fasten your seatbelts, people. We're going to have to turn around and go back to New York. We've lost an engine. Well, I thought an engine had fallen off the plane. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but I found out later that it, <clears throat> something happened and it he had to he had to turn the, the, yeah. the engine off. But anyway, you talk about. And I said, oh, my goodness. Well, it's true. Uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go to heaven from an airplane crash. And from the from the time we turned around and got and landed back in New York, <clears throat> I opened my Bible and I was just reading. And I said, yes, that's this, this is it. <laughs> wow. Of course, it wasn't. And I went I went on to my son's graduation in Cambridge. But I love in the midst of what could have been tragedy you turn to the bible you start you, pouring yourself into god's world i think that's such i think sometimes we in our culture today we forget that the wisdom and the peace that comes from just going to god's word and what a great example here you're in a plane that's lost an engine and you're sitting there reading the bible <laughs> well <laughs> What else do you do? <laughs> <laughs> I knew you. I knew you were going to say that. Uh, that's that's great. Uh, I want to ask you the the letters that you write to your grandchildren and great grandchildren. What was the inspiration about those letters? Well, I think I alluded to it maybe when I said that the family is scattered <clears throat> at that point. At that, that was 18, good gracious, 18 and a half years ago, almost 19 years. Oh dear, I had, I had, uh, I was just wailing before the Lord. How in the world are my children, are my grandchildren ever going to know all the wonderful family stories? Because my mother's family um, had come from Germany. Uh, yeah. that, that's where my name, my name is a German Ernstina, not the English Ernest. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Ernest. <laughs> anyway, um, and, and my dad's family was a wonderful family of generations of Christians. And I said, there's just so many stories that I heard when I was growing up. How in the world are my grandchildren, great grandchildren ever going to know? And it was as if, again, the Lord just nudged me on the shoulder. Write a letter and mm -hmm. tell the stories. So I started writing letters every week, and I'm still doing it. <laughs> That's so good. Because I, I think we, uh, I love what you, because I think we lose that. We lose the, you know, I want my grandkids to know about my parents and my grandparents and, you know, and the legacy that they left because they were a, a strong We've been a strong Christian family, and I, and I love that you write those letters. I think that's a great idea, and I think for those of us who want to uh, pass down a legacy, I think writing like that makes so much sense because it's something that they can have for the rest of their lives, and hopefully it inspires them to, to carry that tradition on. One family. One fa oh, the, the, we put, when, after Cliff and I got married <clears throat> in 19... 1912, we published a book with um, part with with letters in it. <laughs> uh -huh. We had gone through 
we had gone through the 400 at that point in time, 400, I guess, and 50 letters and picked out unexplainable events, dot, 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 but God, legacy letters to our grandchildren to pass on values from the four seasons of life. And that, oh, wow. that's the title of the book. So is the book available if someone? Not really. It's <laughs> okay. <laughs> just, We've got several. Well, <clears throat> Cliff and I decided <clears throat> a couple years ago that we needed to order another thousand to give away at our funerals. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so at Cliff's funeral six months ago, we gave away several hundred, and I, there's probably several hundred left, and uh -huh. I'm enjoying just giving them away. How nice. How nice. Well, I was just thinking after the people that listen to this and hear that you wrote something, somebody may, so we may pass on a name or two of people that say, sure. how, how I, mean, I, I, I mail them out. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's great. Um, any final thing you'd like to say to the people who are listening today? You've, this has been wonderful. I love just you sharing your story and how God's worked in your life and the men that he brought into your life. And my gosh, a family of 54, did you say something like that? Yes. <laughs> That's what a blessing. Any final words of uh, encouragement? Well, <clears throat> as we've already said, everybody makes their own choices. I have a great granddaughter who married a wonderful Christian husband in Lynchburg, Virginia. <laughs> Her daddy pastors um, in Lynchburg, her dad and my, her, her dad and mom. Anyway, so uh, again, pray for your children, grandchildren, mm -hmm. great grandchildren. Just just don't fail to keep lifting them up in prayer. I, I don't I don't guess I know what to say. Um, I guess maybe. With my great granddaughter marriage, one of these days I'll <laughs> I'll be a great great grandmother. <laughs> then, I'll, then I'll start praying for that generation. <laughs> no, I think I think sometimes we. I was listening to a pastor this morning, and he talked about how so many times prayer is the last thing we go to, but God wants us to pray, and it's powerful. And I think there's nothing better we can do for our kids and grandkids than pray for them. I You're mean, absolutely right. And yeah, and um, and then I, and I think God honors that. Certainly, they still have the choice. Absolutely, but there's something special about that that you I think know, I'd use. One of one of my prayers have been uh, in reading the Bible. I, you read over and over how the Lord gives dreams. So I pray for the Lord to give a dream, a vivid, a vivid dream of instruction when you know when I don't know what to say. That's so good. That's really good. I love that. Well, thank you uh, for spending time today. Um, it's so good to get to meet you now that I've, I've heard stuff, stories about you, and now I get to <laughs> spend some time with you. And I thank you for spending time with us today on the podcast. Oh, I thank, I thank my precious Lindsay for referring me to you, for referring us to each other. Yeah, thank, you, thank, thank you, Thank you so much. Absolutely. <laughs>